Oilers Now with Bob Stoffer. Weekdays at noon on Oilers Radio, 630 Chad. We return to Oilers Now with Bob Stoffer. Brought to you by Digitex. Office supplies at huge savings. Yeah, Digitex does that. D I G I T E X dot Z A on Oilers Radio, 630 Chad. It's a pathetic performance. Half of the team doesn't care. You know, it's like, are we going to be happy to, to play eight minutes? I'm, I'm not going to be happy to play eight minutes. What those guys will say if we take 40% of their salary because they only play, or 50% of their salary because we, they only play for 50, 50% of the time. That's enough. That defensive squad, you know, just, I think their goal, I, I really start to believe their goals is to be the worst defensive squad in the league. And they're doing such a great job to be the worst defensive squad in the league. They're, they're, they turn the puck over. You know, they have no vision. They're soft. Like, I never see a bunch of defensemen soft like this. So you know, they put the two combination. And they want to get their noses dirty. Well, hey, there's a lot of guys don't care. They pretend to care, but I know they don't care. It's one of the greatest rants of all time. Welcome back, everybody. That is uh, Rock Voice Scene's former bodyguard, Michelle Terrian. We got Eddie Olchuk in the house, and as legend has it, I'm pretty sure that uh, Michelle maybe, if I recall correctly, took over the Pittsburgh Penguins uh, from Eddie Olchuk during the... 0506 season. Sean Horkoff went in there and ended up having a big night, had a hat trick, and the Oilers uh, took care of business against Sidney Crosby and the Pittsburgh Penguins. And uh, that was the aftermath uh, back of the day. So uh, for two and a half seasons, uh, Terry and coached their farm team. And then during the course of uh, the 0506 season, he was a mid season. He took over December 15th of 05. Uh, the Penguins had a tough year. They ended up going 14, 29, and 8 under Therrien that year. For Oilers fans, the bad news is that's the last time Edmonton beat Pittsburgh in regulation. A guy that loves a great soundbite often provides them on this show. NHL insider John Shannon for Legacy Heating and Cooling. Whether it's heating or cooling you need, get it with no payments and no interest for a year. That's how you build a legacy. Legacy Heating and Cooling. John, were you ever a bodyguard for Rock Voisine back in the day? Uh, no, I wanted to be a bodyguard for Patsy Gallant, but they wouldn't let me. Uh, you would not have needed to have been a body uh, guard for uh, any of the Gallants, as I recall, right? <laughs> Gerard Gallant does not need a bodyguard. He did all of us. Oh, I know that. Don't I know that? I mean, you know, the interesting thing about Michel Therrien is uh, I, I spent a lot of time in Pittsburgh at the end of his tenure there, and uh, they lost on a on a Thursday night to Toronto, 7-1. to one, And... Uh, the end for the end for Terry and in, in Pittsburgh was when he got to the press conference again, just almost like that uh, you, you talked about, and he uh, he said, "Don't ask me these questions. Go in and ask all those guys the questions." And within three days, he was fired. Yes. And that's when Dan Bylsma came in and uh, took him to the Stanley Cup. Yeah, he, I mean, he's uh, he had a lot of success in the Quebec Major Junior League. He was, I mean, the guy was, a, and we're being serious here. He was legitimately a bodyguard for. Oh, he, he's for, a tough guy. Man, he was a tough guy, he, and uh, I know George LaRock. Uh, uh, Michelle was not afraid to tell George how he felt or what he felt about his job as well. Back in the day, the Pittsburgh Penguins are town. It is Santa Day here on Santa's Day here in 6:30. Chad, again, um, with your help, we can make wishes come true, and that includes seeing every child in Edmonton and surrounding area receive a new toy for Christmas. Donate to the 6:30. Chad Santa's Anonymous now by calling 587-416-1000 or visit Santa's anonymous.ca. We had Kevin Lowe on. And it's a very under, uh, earlier on in the show today, very underestimated aspect of what players do. But basically every organization now in the league has a player that's connected to uh, various charity in the city. And it just kind of comes with the territory. And I, you know, I, I know, John, you get to rub shoulders with the players and talk to them and, um, uh, and league executives for that matter as well. And it's often as every bidder is rewarding for the player as it is for the charity to have the player involved. 
You know, and I, I think giving back, um, not, not that they didn't give back years ago too, because there was always, there was always o opportunities, but uh, I, I think players today with the amount of money they earn, I think they realize there's an obligation to give back. Uh, and I, in, in fact, some of them actually have it negotiated into their contracts, how they can help uh, you know, c causes throughout the the cities they're in, whether it's through private boxes and donating that money to uh, uh, to charities, and and then allowing kids to come to games. But you're right, and and it, it was one of the things that a lot of managers uh, make part of the, the the prerequisites of joining an organization. We want you to be committed to the to the uh, the city. We want you to be committed to some opportunities for uh, the underprivileged. And quite frankly, it just makes so much sense. All right, let's go to our game day lineup report brought to you by Craig Hummel at Remax Excellence. Find your dream home, list your old home, sold today, edmonton.ca. Uh, the, the, the story in this Edmonton-Pittsburgh matchup, so much of it is focused McDavid versus Crosby. You know, the two Canadian generational stars. There's a guy named Leon Drysettle that's having a wonderful year as well. But for Edmonton, it's four of their D-men being out that have 2,378 games of NHL experience. And the owners have recalled Broberg, Lagesson, and now Nima Linen. And those guys have played a combined total of 33 NHL games. John, your thoughts? Well, and, and uh, we talked about it a bit on Monday, is how, how Dave Tippett was not afraid to throw Broberg into certain situations Saturday night in Vegas, uh, particularly late in the game. And the other one is, that it, this William Lagesson, he, he won't go away. And he's getting his game is getting better. Uh, and to me, uh, what, what I see with Lagesson, is someone who wants to improve his game, not not afraid to go back to Bakersfield when he's been told to go back to Bakersfield and, and work under Jay Woodcroft. And when you have depth like that and to replace all of those injured players like Nurse and Keith and CC, uh, you know, th that's that's a real, real plus for the organization. And so William Lagesson's one of those guys who came to the NHL a little different. As a Swede, you know, we always think that they uh, they manufacture defensemen in Sweden and they come up a certain way. Here was a guy that came to North America, played junior hockey in the United States, uh, but had committed to his parents that he would go to university uh, and played university hockey, college hockey in the United States to get to the professional ranks. And uh, to me, he's a, he's a really, really interesting case study of somebody who is diligent and trying to improve his game every day. All right. Uh, so much of this has been about uh, Crosby against McDavid. We know Leon's having an unbelievable year. 20 goals, leads the NHL, leads the league in power play goals, leads the league in game winning goals, leads the league in points at 40. But is Zach Hyman a bit of a difference maker too for Edmonton? Uh, you know, I I think Hyman's their third best forward with all due respect to Ryan Nugent Hopkins. And yes, Apolliarvi is no slouch either. The others are much deeper up front. Are they better uh, equipped, even with the injuries on the back end, to challenge Pittsburgh, who've kind of had Edmonton's numbers here for years and years and years? Well, I, I think so. And I think that, you know, when an Eastern Conference team comes to town, Bob, uh, I think you get a, you'll get a sense of it because Zach is much more familiar. And we, we, we talk about it once in a while, the difference between what it's like to play in the West versus to play in the East. And I think when you see an Eastern Conference opponent like Pittsburgh and the Leafs, when Zach played there, the Leafs had a great rivalry with the Penguins. Uh, I think you see a different level, a different style of hockey. And I think it really does, uh, is tailored much more for the way Zach plays the game. And I, I expect he will have a, a huge impact. I think Warren Fogle will have a, a huge impact tonight as well because of the style of hockey they've played the last three or four years. Tristan Jari is 5-0-1 with three shutouts, and he's got a 983 save percentage over his last six starts. He's been the first star in five straight games. Is this guy an option for Team Canada? That's a good question. Uh, I think the first question is, is you have to answer, is Carey Price still an option for Team Canada? Right. Uh, but I would suspect that uh, if there's a short list of four or five guys, uh, you're going to you're going to have to put Tristan uh, on the uh, on the list. The, I, I saw something. It's funny in the shootout loss to uh, Calgary the other night. Uh, he made a save in the shootout. 
Uh, and he, he literally, it, it was almost like he came out to challenge the puck and then stared it down. You can see the confidence grow in this guy. Uh, and we all saw him at the Memorial Cup in, in London. We saw him, you know, lead the Oil Kings to the, to the championship. And we also saw him struggle in Pittsburgh over the last little while, particularly last year in the playoffs. Uh, but to see his confidence grow, you, you actually can, you, in my opinion, you can see his body grow uh, as he becomes much more comfortable as the number one guy. And there's no question in my mind he's the number one guy in Pittsburgh uh, for this season and years to come. All right, John, I'm going to put you on the spot because nobody's got league sources like you do. John Shannon, our NHL insider. Uh, Rob Brindamore fined 25000 bucks, but we were hearing reports that there was actually no post-game report written by the officiating crew. So who made the call? Uh, I know that this was written about in The Athletic. I believe it was Sarah Sivian that wrote it out of Carolina. What are you hearing on that front? Well, uh, the, here's the one thing I can tell you. Um, that uh, the hockey operations group at the National Hockey League, led by Colin Campbell, have uh, excellent hearing. Uh, okay. They know what's going. <laughs> they know what's. They know what's going on constantly. They know what's going on all the time. They can see it. Uh, whether there was not an official report written up, I can guarantee you. I can guarantee you that um, there was discussions between the officiating group and hockey operations and the Hurricanes, uh, and and c coaches have been warned, managers have been warned this season about their role in the game and how they should approach uh, situations like Rod had that night, whether it was an offside, whether it was a penalty, which came first. And you have to watch yourself and you have to control yourself. And that's something the league is really trying to, uh, uh, to stamp down at any opportunity. And that's what, they, that's what they did and why they did it to Brindamore for the 25K. John Kurt Hill made a blockbuster deal. He's coming up next. Thanks for joining us on Oilers Now on Santa's Day here in 630 Chet. Tell you what, the Oil Kings might be number one by next week if they, they keep this up. Well, there, a lot of people thought they'd be number one to start the season. Thanks a lot, John. Royal Royal Pizza, Pizza Pass, and so much more. Edmonton owned and operated for over 50 years for a menu and a list of their 14 Edmonton and area locations. Go online at royalpizza.ca or download the Royal Pizza app from the App Store. The staffer recommendation is the Mediterranean chicken. When we come back... The man who orchestrated the deal to bring Caden Gooley here. It's, we don't normally do this on a uh, Oilers game day, but it's a big train. Oil Kings general manager Kurt Hill when we return. Hi, this is Ryan Nugent Hopkins from your Edmonton Oilers, and you're listening to Oilers Now with Bob Stoffer on 6.30 Chad. Reminder 147 in Edmonton that today is Santa's Day on 6.30 Chad, inspired by a simple wish to see every child receive a new toy at Christmas. With your help, we can make that wish come true. You can donate to 6.30 Chad Santa's Anonymous right now by calling 587 416 1,000. That's 587-416-1000. Or visit santasanonymous.ca. With an update, here's Brendan Escott. Yeah, we've done an, uh, an amazing job. The Oilers Now listenership has started out the show just under $70,000 raised over the course of today. We're up over $86,000 since. So a great job to everybody. You can still dial in at the number Bob just mentioned and keep those donations coming. 587-416-1000. And the Edmonton Oil Kings got an early Christmas uh, gift as well. Certainly the players did. A deal that uh, I don't think just happened overnight. Let's find out. Here's Edmonton Oil Kings General Manager Kurt Hill, who I, I believe is not in town. Kurt, where are you at right now? I'm in Ottawa, Bob, at the uh, under-17s with Team Canada Block here, yeah. Okay, well, uh, how long did it uh, uh, take you to make this deal come to fruition with the Prince Albert Raiders? You give up six pieces in a trade to get Caden Gooley, who's the uh, returning defenseman for Canada for the upcoming World Juniors. You know, it's, it's a, lo a long time, let me put it that way. I mean, it's obviously something we we explored in the summer. There's some targets that we wanted to start, uh, you know, talking to teams about. And Caden was obviously a guy that was pretty much number one on our list. I mean, the, what he brings to, to the organization is huge. His experience, he's won before. 
you know, the way he plays the game, he competes just such, at such a high level. It's just, you know, we're adding one of the marquee players across not just the Western League, but the CHL. And, yeah, but long, I guess short answer to your, long answer to your question, but it was probably a good two to three months to finally get it all sealed up and, and done here today. All right. Well, Caden Dooley was the 16th overall pick by the Montreal Canadiens in the 2020 NHL draft. He went two picks before Dylan Holloway, who was right there in a window for the Oilers, along with Seth Jarvis. Uh, uh, Gooley uh, with Prince Albert so far this year, 15 points in 17 games. He's an even player on a team that's in a rebuild. He's no longer in a rebuild, and he was also with Team Canada last year at two goals and three points in seven games. He'll be on tonight's face-off show, extended version 6-8 to eight with Reed, Rob, myself, and Cam Moon, and he'll be on at 6-20 with Reed. So, uh, you know, you know he's going to play on the World Junior Team. You know Sebastian Kose is in the World Junior Team. Is it fair to say most people would suggest you got the best goalie and the best best defenseman now on your team in the WHL? Yeah, no, I think on paper that's what uh, yeah everybody would, would probably say that. And, you know, now it's it's up to those guys to continue to push and continue to develop as players. And, you know, it's you know, we can bring as many guys as we want. And at the end of the day, it's the guys in the room that are going to have to get this done. You know, our, our coaching staff and our entire support staff are going to give them the tools and give them the best you know, advantages we can to to win this thing, but uh, you know they got to want it, and they're going to have to get the job done. All right, so you don't just have. Uh, I mean, Gooley's going to be on Team Canada. He's a returning defenseman. It's a slam dunk. He was on the team last year, played big minutes. Uh, Kosa is on Team Canada because all three goalies make it that were invited to the team. Jake Neighbors, I would suggest, is all but a stone cold mortal lock. And Dylan Gunther might be the one guy that might get pushed, but he is a ninth overall pick. Kurt, you can have four guys from the Oil Kings on Team Canada. How many games do you play uh, during the time that all of your kids are off at the World Juniors? We're going to be playing ten games over that court. Like we play, yeah. We when when those guys leave, we play five games before Christmas and five after. Yeah. Wow. And you and you also got. Where, uh, don't you have another the Vegas pick, Demick? Yeah, Demick is on. He's it's been approved that he's made uh, Team Slovakia. So. Yeah, potentially five guys, yeah. Uh, was there any concern about you gave up two number ones? Uh, uh, Latimer was an Ottawa fourth-round pick, a forward that scored a bit last year for you. Johnson was a young defenseman that was looking pretty good. You gave up a couple other conditional picks. Were you concerned giving up six assets to get one player for half a season? You know, I think anytime you, you're you're trying to acquire one of the best players in the country, you know it's gonna, you know there's gonna be significant pieces going going the other way, and you know Johnston and Latimer are, you know guys that uh, we drafted in this organization and and are gonna and are good players already and gonna continue to be great players in this league, and um, you know the picks we've. We've, we've acquired some picks that, you know, I think that makes that hurt a little bit less. You know, I think we still have our first round pick this year in the draft. And in 2022, the draft in May, we have our first round pick. So being able to protect those, you know, was important. I like where our pick inventory is at. But, you know, I guess at the end of the day, that is what I what we feel as an organization that Caden's going to bring. You know, I think we, we were prepared to, to pay that price. And we think he's going to be a big addition to help us try to win this thing. And, uh, you know. Like I said, it's up to the guys in the room at this point, and we'll go from there. Final one for you. Are you done? I mean, you lost Latimer. He's a top six or seven overall forward uh, for your team. Are you, is there going to be an impetus to potentially maybe add another, say, a 19-year-old forward? I think you got. I think we're going to be looking and seeing what's out there on the market for sure. I don't. Uh, you know, these next ten games, we're going to see what our what the depth of our team. You know, our our older guys that aren't going to the World Juniors, how they're going to play, and you know, the the rest of our depth and where our young players are at when those guys are gone, they're going to get everyone's going to get a lot of opportunity to play here over this next month. And you know, with the deadline being January seventeenth, it gives us a little bit more time to evaluate and you know and see where we're at and, and see who's on the market. Kurt, great stuff. Much appreciated. Good luck uh, at the event in Ottawa. Thanks a lot, Bob. Thanks for having me. You bet. That is Kurt Hill. And a reminder for the listeners, uh, two games this weekend. Uh, the order is uh, home tonight against the Pittsburgh Penguins. We will fly tomorrow to Seattle, play the, the Kraken Friday. Uh, but the Edmonton Oil Kings Friday against Medicine Hat, Saturday against Moose Jaw. The game against Moose Jaw is the Teddy Bear Toss uh, game. So that's always a, a huge draw. And again, the Oil Kings will have Caden Gooley in the lineup. Uh, they'll have uh, Sebastian Kosa. They'll have Dylan Gunther. They'll have Jake Neighbors. And, oh, by the way, they go to Winnipeg.
who are the number one ranked team in junior hockey right now. They've only lost one game all year in regulation. Guess who they lost that game to? You got it, Edmonton. All right, to wrap up the show, we go to this day in Oilers history for New West Travel. Looking for a great Oilers roadie? You can fly nonstop to Nashville, Smashville, Nash Vegas with Flair Airlines to watch the Oilers play for just $1,750. You can reach out to newwesttravel.com. Brendan Escott's back in the studio. We've been spending a lot of time around 96, 97, so I'll uh, stay there as Oilers defenseman Kevin Lowe became the 30th player in NHL history to appear in 1,200 games, but the Anaheim Mighty Ducks knocked off Edmonton 4-2. Lowe finished a dash two on the night while Marius Tchaikovsky and Todd Marchant scored the goals. Marius Tchaikovsky was married to a former Bond girl. Did you know that, Brendan? I didn't, but the name kind of fits. Yeah. Isabella Skorupko was her name, and she was in uh, one of the James Bond movies in the mid-1990s. This day in Oilers history brought to you by New West Travel. Looking for a great road trip? Fly nonstop to Nashville. Flair Airlines to see the Oilers play for just $1,750. Call New West Travel. Go online, newwesttravel.com. Again, tomorrow, Brendan Escott will be hosting. Guests will include Sportsnet color analyst Louis DeRuss for GCL Diesel. And for our friends at Canadian Power Pack, Kevin Weeks. Canadian Power Pack is Alberta's leader in electrical construction and service electrical prefabrication and solar. Oilers and Penguins live tonight from Rogers Place at 6 p.m. Uh, I will be joining Reed Wilkins. Rob Brown and Cam Moon. Jack Michaels, also part of the Oilers Radio Network uh, with the face-off show. The puck drop 8-17 tonight. Edmonton and Pittsburgh. Santa's Anonymous. Santa's Day on 6.30. Chad continues. Up next, the global news weather traffic update with Eileen Bell, followed by Rob Breckenridge from 2 to 3, and then 6.30 Chad Afternoons with Jalen Nye from 3 to 6. Talk to you later. So long, everybody, from Oilers Now. Oilers Now with Bob Stoffer. Weekdays at noon on Oilers Radio, 630 Chad.